Bravery, created by dogfighters to be the ultimate canine gladiator. A brick-like head, powerful jaws, and an athletic, whippet-thin body. Tenacious, agile, it is genetically programmed to inflict terrible injuries. As the UK is finding out. It seems more and more illegal pit bulls are on our streets than ever before. Imagine if this was a child. It got hold of me and just completely went mad, basically. It just started banging me on the floor and just throwing me all around. You wouldn't even think it was a live person in its mouth at the time. Roxana Khan was just six years old when she was savaged by a pit bull outside her Bradford school in 1991. This is where it happened, and it came out from over there. The dog came from that way, and he got up on there, and he bashed her here and there and here and there and on the railings. One bite was so deep, it exposed a lung. She lost half her blood and was left with shattered ribs, missing teeth, and a broken nose. Doctors said Roxana's wounds were within an inch of killing her. What's it like being in the jaws of one of these animals? painful. Um, you don't really know what to suspect actually. It's just in its jaw, it's going to do whatever it wants to do. You can't stop it. You just have to go along with everything that's happening. You have to go with the pain, the blood and all the injuries afterwards. The attack on Roxana provoked a public outcry and was a major factor in the creation of the 1991 Dangerous Dogs Act. I can tell the House from midnight tonight the import of dogs bred for fighting such as the American pit bull terriers and Japanese tozers will be banned. Such dogs have no place in our homes. The Dangerous Dogs Act was designed to outlaw pit bull types as a banned breed. But is it failing? That question needs to be asked on Merseyside. For Liverpool's young criminal class, pit bulls are a status symbol. The gangs even post videos on the internet boasting about their dogs. Anyone caught possessing a pit bull will usually have their dog destroyed. But if owners convince the courts their pet isn't a danger and will be neutered, microchipped, muzzled and leashed in public, only then will they be spared. Roxana Khan believed she'd be the pit bull's last child victim. She wasn't. This is BBC Radio Merseyside. A five-year-old girl has been mauled to death by a pit bull terrier at the family home on Merseyside has been named as Ellie Lawrenson. It was here on Merseyside in the early hours of New Year's Day that the pit bull ripped its way into the public consciousness again with the death of Ellie Lawrenson. Panorama has been given access to statements made by police and paramedics who were here at the scene on the night Ellie died. The content is horrific, but if you want to know how seriously pit bulls need to be taken, then you should listen. I walked into the house and there was blood in the hallway. I looked in the front room and the laminate flooring was covered in blood. I saw a dark coloured suite and a large chair by the window. I saw a girl's body. Her head was near the large chair. I covered the child's body with blankets. Christian Duncan is a plastic surgeon at the Alder Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool. He operates on those children that survive dog attacks. And over the last year, he's been kept extremely busy. In this hospital, we have averaged over the last year approximately one admission to uh, the accident and emergency every day. Around 70 of those suffered wounds so serious they underwent plastic surgery. 
and disturbingly, more and more of Christian Duncan's patients are turning out to be very young children. We get an increasing number of children between around about the age of one and the age of six. Around a quarter of these children will be victims of pit bulls. An American pit bull terrier or pit bull dog can inflict very serious damage on a child. The bite force that's generated is very significant and usually involves puncture wounds, and that will be multiple puncture wounds because there are a lot of teeth involved. The way the injury takes place often involves a certain amount of traction, and what happens is you get the teeth puncturing the skin, digging in, and then pulling. Somebody is breeding these pit bulls. The question is, who are they, and how do they operate? Behind the inner city teenage gangs and their street status symbols is a supply chain which has its roots in organized dog fighting. A criminal network in a different league to the pseudo gangsters. Over the years, I've reported extensively on paramilitary violence here in Northern Ireland. The world I'm about to enter is just as dangerous. I'll require specialist help from someone with the skill and training to win these people's confidence. Someone they will never suspect. We first met Steve in his hometown of Newcastle. An undercover operative, he spent many years serving with an elite British Army unit. But this time, instead of guns, Steve would be relying on his wits. I would later meet up with him in Northern Ireland, because as we reveal, it is a major pit bull supply route to UK cities, like Liverpool, as others have discovered. Northern Ireland is the epicentre of dog fighting in the UK, if not Europe. You have two of the biggest dog fighting kennels operating in this country and they are absolutely paramount to the supply of pit bulls over to England. Stephen Philpott and his team have been battling dog fighters for years. There were local successes but something was to happen in April last year which opened the door on this secret world not just in Northern Ireland but right across the rest of the UK and Europe. Let, let me know if any vehicles arrive at the front, okay? Yeah, no, but okay. okay cheers. Bye, bye. The US PCA were tipped off that a pit bull imported into the Irish Republic, where the breed is legal, would be smuggled illegally over the border into Northern Ireland. As that animal was being unloaded, I was satisfied that that dog was a heavily scarred pit bull terrier. A US PCA team trailed two men to this house in the town of Dungannon. With police backup, they raided the property, seizing the smuggled pit bull and discovering three other unlicensed dogs. In a shed, we found training equipment, namely treadmills, mechanized treadmills, that I know are used by organized dog fighters to condition their dogs and stamina train their dogs for fighting. But Stephen Philpott wasn't prepared for what happened next. The man whose house he'd raided is an Irish sporting legend. I suddenly thought to myself, here's a guy whose picture was up on my kid's bedroom wall, and all along he was nothing better than a scummy dogfighter. Cavlin gets it off the left foot. Jared Cavlin is a Gaelic football star. A half forward for County Tyrone, he's played in front of 83,000 fans to win the All Ireland final. Gaelic football's version of the FA Cup. Jared Cavlin drives it high. And Jared Cavan puts Tyrone in the lead. The heavily scarred pit bull seized from Cavlin's house was a Finnish fighting dog called Cannonball. But it wasn't just the capture of Cannonball which excited Stephen Philpott. It was the discovery of dog fighting literature in Cavlin's house. The BBC has been given unique access to the documents discovered in Cavlin's house. They read like a who's who of the dog fighting fraternity. Some of the top fighting gangs in the country are listed here. 
They have names like Boneyard Kennels, Prize Fighter, and Cavlin's own outfit, the Bulldog Sanctuary Kennels. There were also blow-by-blow -blow accounts of major dog fights in Ireland, the UK and Europe in the last 10 years. Some of the dog fighters are even pictured posing with their pit bulls, and children are included in some of the snaps. The material at Jared Cavlin's house showed us that dog fighting was more organised, more lucrative, and, and bigger than we had ever, ever thought possible. This was an absolute Aladdin's cave of material for anyone who now wanted to go and investigate dog fighting. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. Clearly, Cavlin had international connections. As we sifted through the box of evidence seized from the football star's home, two names stood out. A Finn called Robert Gonzalez, the man named on Cannonball's pet passport, and Paul Dunkel, the boss of a pit bull breeding business based outside Helsinki. Posing as a couple, Steve, the undercover operative, and I traveled to Finland to investigate the possibility of buying a fighting pit bull from Paul Dunkel. We find his house hidden away at the end of a long lane, surrounded by forest. Hi, Paul. Hello. How are you? Dunkel led us on a kennel tour, assuring us his dogs had impeccable fighting credentials. We used secret cameras on this trip, but Dunkel did allow us to use a camcorder. Pit bulls are legal in Finland. Dog fighting is not. Usually we have about 40 dogs here. Yep. And right now I guess the exact count is something like 35 or something like that, more or less. If you are searching for a fighting dog, then I suggest that we do some deal like this, that we test him here before you even Talk more. This could be a little bit uh, what you are searching for a uh, wild, crazy, active yes. sporting dog. And he has been in some action. And this is almost a guarantee that it will be something that you are looking for. He's a Tasmanian devil on a leaf. Hey, kicks the other dog's ass. Being a Dunkel pit bull can't be much of a life. If you put him in a dog fight, he will probably, no matter if he's in good or bad condition, he will fight from the beginning to the end and probably he will die. As pit bull after pit bull was introduced, it was clear we were standing in the middle of a dog fighting factory. He bites hard and she has good skills from all our dogs. She has the most biting power. It's like a crushing bones ability. Then out of the blue came the link to Cannonball the pit bull seized at Jared Cavlin's home. Dunkel told us he knew Robert Gonzalez, the name on Cannonball's pet passport. In fact, Gonzalez had tested Cannonball against one of Dunkel's pit bulls. Dog fighters call it a roll. Cannonball was the first time beaten up about 20 meters down there yeah. and Bobby Gonzalez came with his friends uh, and he had a cannonball it was really in the peak condition yeah. and he said hey let's take a roll with the cannonball and ties I said hey what the heck let's try then we had the roll here and it was really devastating for Bobby Gonzalez no wonder cannonball was found to be heavily scarred when he was captured by the US PCA but back to the business of choosing a fighting dog. The most uh, good choices would be, for example, Nipper. Yeah. He's a super dog and he's already rolled. He's a good one. Nipper could be ours for 2,000 euros. Dunkel also offered to export the potentially lethal pit bull. We wanted to test the UK ban on importing dogs bred for fighting. <laughs> We told Dunkel we'd be back in a few months to buy Nipper. It's been about an hour since we left Dunkel Kennels and I still can't quite believe what I saw in there. Ears off, some of the dogs he showed us he said have been retired because 
they'd had to have all of their teeth extracted because they got damaged in fights or they had got broken on some of their toys, which were these boulders. It was just, it was just incredible. Forget boulders. This is what happens when pit bulls use their teeth to chew on a child. This is a patient who was admitted almost a year ago exactly. And she was attacked by a pit bull. There's a sort of a crescent here. Mm. And this crescent represents the bite pattern of the animal with probably a series of bites actually and a series of wounds characterized by tearing in this direction. And I can tell you, although it's not possible to do with the picture, that if one were to stick a finger into this wound, for example, it would come out oh. this wound. Dog fighting was banned in the UK in 1835. But all it did was force dog fighting activity underground. Today, they take place in pits like this. Dog fighting is extremely brutal, but there's a lot more to it than simply forcing two pit bulls into a ring like this one and waiting for them to tear each other to pieces. The orgy of violence unfolds in a highly controlled environment. For instance, each ring must be at least 15 by 15 foot and carpeted. And you've got these marks called scratch lines, which identify each dog's corner. When you hear that a dog has been scratched, it means it's been released from behind these lines to fight. Matches are governed by a strict set of rules. There are 19 in all, and each offers a unique insight into how underground fights are conducted. For years, dog fighters have tried to keep them secret, but this copy was seized during the raid on Gerard Cavlin's house. Take rule five, the pre-match washing of the dogs. It reads like a bizarre ritual. Both dogs to be washed in the same warm water. Both dogs to be rinsed in clean water, taken from the same container. One kennel in particular appears time after time in the match reports found in Cavlin's home. They're one of the most notorious gangs of dogfighters in the UK, indeed in Europe, and they're based here in the town of Tandragee in County Armagh. They're the Farmer's Boys. The Farmer's Boys are absolutely huge. They're massive. They're the Manchester United of the dogfighting world. Anywhere you go, they're talked about with the utmost respect. Over the last 25 years, they have established trading partners in inner city Britain and they're now selling their dogs to those people in those cities. Glasgow, Edinburgh, Manchester, Liverpool, London. This is London and the sort of place where farmers boys dogs can end up. Police seized 21 pit bulls from this house in Northolt last November. Some were described as pit bull royalty in court. And among the paperwork discovered, this pedigree certificate. The farmers' boys, they are like very well known, very popular guys in the breed in, in the pit bull. Definitely. Ricardo Byfield and his wife Lisa were jailed and banned from owning dogs for life. But Lisa's out now and clearly still involved with dogs. She says she's rearing them for a friend. But how were we going to infiltrate an international dog fighting ring? We'd seen pictures of the farmer's boys, but making contact with the gang wasn't going to be easy. Our intelligence told us that dog shows in the Irish Republic provided a safe meeting place for fighters. Pit bulls are legal here. Then we got lucky. We came across an advert in a local paper for a dog show here at Castle Ballingham, just across the border. It was a long shot, but it worked. Among ordinary members of the public, we find some farmers' boys. Who the targets we look for? Steve had spotted the godfather of the farmers' boys, Stephen Barisco. He caught his attention by talking about our recent trip to Dunkel Kennels. I just moved over from England, and I was looking at. 
But again, they've done a very solid one there now, so should be ready to go. Legend has it that Barisgill imported the first pit bull into Northern Ireland in the 1980s, when the dogs were still legal. The Dangerous Dogs Act was meant to stamp out pit bulls as a breed, but dog fighting still thrives, attracting some very dangerous people, as the USPCA has discovered. Sledgehammer attacks on our properties, arson attacks on our properties, and on numerous occasions, these people just steal the dogs straight back off us again. It's a very, very, very difficult world to bring to an end. A world our undercover operative was being drawn into. Steve's exchange at Castle Bellingham was enough to get him invited to another show on the Farmer's Boys' home turf in Northern Ireland. Pitbulls are banned here, but the gang openly paraded fighting dogs among legitimate breeds. And Stephen Barriscoll had a surprise in store. Could you do me a big beer with it here? Could you judge your dogs? Pitbulls? Let's see why not. They just keep his right line. Well, they'll be arranged here at me, you know. We're showing our own dogs. What was Steve supposed to do? It had to be a test. But would he pass? Right, you see in this class here, uh, staff dogs and bitches, and then you have a small type staff. Yeah. Well, that's the show type staff. Yeah. That's the Irish staff. Yeah. American staff, dog and American staff, bitches, that's just slang for pit bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, if you're going to be judging here, I'll not be seen talking to you. But I'd be better if you stayed away from me, you know what I mean? Right. Because, uh, <laughs> in case you put any of my dogs up. <laughs> <laughs> Barisco could relax. Whatever happened, the farmer's boys would take away the top prizes that day. American staff dog! So this, is, it, is, it, is this small stuff as well? No, this is American pit bull dogs. First up was a farmer's boy with his fighting dog, Bucky. Yeah. How long's that him? Three years. Good dog? All right. Game boy? Come on. Good dog. Good dog. Good dog. Good dog. All held up, yeah. Yeah, there's another chunk out of the fucking head here. Ah, shit. Good chunk out of the fucking head. You fucking like some big dogs, actually. Aye. Get in underneath and fucking lap them, but... Aye. Throw it in. Why do you go to those like fucking 60 turns, he was racking? Yeah. Next up was another farmer's boy. Or should that be a farmer's girl? What's his line? Um, he's farmer's boy, he's with a touch of China man. Yeah. How long have you heard him? Have you heard him from Pop Lager, yeah? He's Stevie's dog. Yeah. You'll be getting a prize then. But one of our biggest prizes of the day was meeting this man, farmer's boy Chris Hamill. He had actually watched Cannonball fight in Finland with the footballer Gerard Cavlin. You've seen Cannonball fight like? Yeah. Fucking happy mate, that. But he was a small dog, like, and he was fucking eating it yesterday, but the big dog just came back on him just to finish him then. Steve got his reward for handing out most of the prizes to the farmer's boys. Barriscoll invited him to join them for a drink after the show. If the judging was a test, Steve had not only passed, but he'd started to earn his place in the farmer's boys' fold. There's a pub in Tondagy we're all going for a drink in the night. Right, okay. Called the Paddock. You sure want to come down? That's great, mate. Well, done for me at the flat. Uh, be a whole lot of dog men there. The Paddock is the farmer's boys' pub of choice. Located in Tandragee's High Street, Steve met the farmer's boys there on many subsequent occasions. Invariably, to hear Barisco hold court. Hey, it's been going on around Tandragee for that many couple of years. You know what I mean? Uh, inner circle of the game for serious people, you know what I mean? We are in the breeding our own, on our own name and nothing and all, you know what I mean? And that's the next step of the European main. What it came down to was that the farmer's boys kennel as the call ourselves was the biggest supplier within Europe for fighting American pit bull terriers. Their main buyers at the minute is the Asian community from Birmingham. They could buy up to 20 dogs a month and they're buying them in pup form and bringing them up themselves or they're buying the dogs at two, two and a half year old ready for fighting. We are into going over and taking the fucking Germans and home and one thing or not, you know what I mean? I'm not, you know what I mean? 
know what I mean? That's what friends are. We were the first people ever to fucking say zero doubt in the comments, you know what I mean? That's the direction we want to go in. You know, becoming like a warrior of course. The farmers' boys have built their name on keeping outsiders out. But that's just what they've done. Now, Steve needed to buy a pit bull. It would give him credibility with the farmers' boys. But we also wanted to find out, despite a ban, how easy it would be to smuggle a fighting dog into the UK. That meant a return to Paul Dunkel in Finland. Since our last visit six months before, Dunkel's pit bull business had been doing well. We run now one of the biggest uh, dog supply business in the whole Finland. Yeah? Yeah, and, and fastest growing. Dunkel took us up into the woods to see Nipper again. The dog is descended from Little Killer, a Texan fighting pit bull legend. Here we have one super dog. Say hello to Nipper. He is a really strong built one. We don't put pit bull down on the passport though, do we? No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's okay, yeah. There is no. No, nothing that connects to Pitbull that you can use the and you, and I suggest that you really like uh, stick to the plan I mean in every corner mm -hmm. that even if you are walking in the United Kingdom or England mm -hmm. where I guess it's not allowed to have a yeah. unregistered Pitbulls mm -hmm. you just say that this is a boxer retriever mix yeah. I bought it from Finland from Paul Dunkel that's mm -hmm. very easy then it was back to the house where Dunkel and his wife Yona talked us through how to illegally import a fighting pit bull into a country like the UK. It seemed like second nature to them. All the documents, the legal documents, uh, doesn't have anything to do with pit bulls or fighting dogs <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, those documents are totally legal. They are official and legal. There is no problem with that. Is he chipped already? Yeah? Yes, he okay. is chipped already. There is the microchip number. Yeah, the barcode. Yes, and there is the breed, the official breed. Boxer Labrador. Yes. This is the previous uh, vaccinations, were, but now we have uh, this new EU passport, Pet which passport. is the one that he has to have. And then this is the paper that you shouldn't keep with the other papers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the registration certificate. This is the only document that proves Nipper is 100% American pit bull. It should impress the farmer's boys but the Dunkels warned us to keep it hidden. We always do it like that, it's paper. Well, of course the dog is what it is, you yeah. know, papers or no papers, but the fact is that we breed only purebred American people terriers. Are you paying now? Yeah. How much mm. are you paying? You How much do you want? Uh, as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that we talked about 2,000 euros. Was yeah, it that? I think it was 2,000 yes. euros. Thank, Thank you very you much. much. Everything will be okay, yeah. and legal, and keep a, uh, I don't mean keep a low profile, but don't uh, uh, talk to no. all your friends. Mission accomplished. We'd bought Nipper and would test the UK ban on importing fighting dogs later. But while we were in Finland, we also wanted to visit the other man named on the paperwork found in Jared Kavlin's house, Robert Gonzalez. So, what brings you to Finland? Well, we came over, we ordered a uh, dog. Uh -huh. Who's uh, helping you? Over here, Yeah. Paul Dunkel. Oh, okay, you know what's the worst thing with Dunkel dogs? Yeah. They're man biters. It wasn't until I joined the Farmers Boys. You know the Farmers Boys? Yeah. yeah that they told me about you. Right, okay. Once Gonzalez had checked our dog fighting credentials, he seemed happy to talk about Cannonball, the pit bull seized from Jared Cavlin. He's the strongest dog He's, yeah. people have seen. Real big head. He will just walk and grab you, pick you up and put you <laughs> in the corner and finish you. Yeah. No, it's just a shame that they've got hold of him. What can you do? G that King. was very, very bad luck. Is Jer keeping you informed on what's happening? And yeah, I just talked to him uh, a week ago.
Jared Kavlin's legion of fans had no idea their hero has more than Gaelic football on his mind. But we wanted to hear about Kavlin's secret dogfighting life from the horse's mouth. So through Bobby Gonzalez, we made him an offer. If Kavlin wanted the evidence to disappear, Steve would steal Cannonball back from the authorities. Half an hour after Steve put the phone down to Gonzalez, Kavlin bit. Tell me, is this a big job, is it? Would it be hard to do? What, to get it away from there? Yeah. I don't think it'd be big as what you would think, mate, to be honest. I'd like to get him toward the, toward the end of next week, if it's all possible. Maybe, 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 courts, maybe it's in the 20, 30 of them. Right, so you need it gone for them, mate. Need it gone as soon as possible, more or less. Because if he's not there, there's no case. I can meet you any time. There he is. There he is now. Yes, stand by, stand by. Kavlin was more widely travelled than we had imagined. He admitted visiting dogfighters in Holland and confirmed he'd been to Finland to watch Cannonball fight. Did you match over there, like, or did you see? No, we just went over. To, we went over to Cannonball's match, is it? Ah, uh, when was there? Was three or four matches on that day. Like, from that's it. The footballer also admitted, despite his looming court case, that he was still involved in keeping fighting dogs. Everything's tucked away like in a road. Uh, still have... a dozen or fifteen dogs, like. What's the story in there? What, 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 where, where is the spot? Is it just outside Belfast? We'll, we'll go up now. I'll show you, mate, you can see from the hill. It's in a place called Palace Barracks. Palace Barracks? Yeah, which is an army camp. So you happy enough that once you get all cannonball that you can we get shifted and I never be seen again. Steve drove Cavlin to a country park which overlooked the barracks. Our cameramen were hidden in undergrowth. Yeah, bro, I'm wait I don't forget a view from here, but That's a place there, see? All that is one camp. Yeah. And that's where we'd get exercise there. In that yellow pit? Yeah. Have a look through, see if you might have to just adjust them way a bit. You see him? You get such days in that baby tape pit? Yeah, yeah. Then it turned out kidnapping Cannonball was not a new concept to Cavlin. We had planned to go and see him. Yeah. And I advised to come in. As soon as I drove out of this place, they were going to drive in and lift them and go, but it never came off. We didn't kidnap Cannonball. We never intended to. Cavlin duly appeared in court on the 23rd of April. He pleaded guilty to possession of a pit bull type, but the court heard that Cavlin was an innocent who had collected Cannonball as a favour for a friend. The footballer walked free with a fine, a five-year ban on keeping terrier-type dogs and ordered to pay costs. On appeal, the courts reduced the costs and lifted the ban on owning dogs. Mr. Cavlin, Mandy McCauley from the BBC. I want to ask you some questions. Mr. Cavlin. Why was the court told that you knew nothing about pit bulls? Mr. Cavlin, that's a lie. It's a lie, isn't it? You're an international dog fighter. You've been travelling to matches across Europe, watching animals rip each other apart. How do you think your fans will feel when they realise what you've been doing, that you've been involved in animal cruelty? How do you think the authorities will feel whenever they realise you've got fighting dogs stashed across the country? Cavlin may lead a double life, but let's get back to the man whose whole life it is to fight dogs, the farmer's boys. In the weeks before Christmas, Steve met them again at the paddock. The gang had just won a dog fight. This is Tom Bell. He is Stephen Barriskill's right-hand man and the breeding backbone of the farmer's boys. You going all right yesterday, huh? I've been one in 26 minutes. Yeah, I see, we should have. Long enough, aren't they? Oh, fuck, that's a quick one. That was quick enough. 26 minutes. 
Then the godfather himself, Stephen Barraskill, turned up. Did you make any money yesterday? No, I hadn't. No, I had a lot of money on it. Somebody always a lot of... I'm not really a gambler. I hate losing. <laughs> Sends the atmosphere a bit bad at the end, uh, right? Yeah. It's just pure sport for me, you know. Uh, and the, with the injured battle with it. Or by choice. Couple of eyes from L Liverpool there. And uh, I think they had about thousand year olds each of on you know on our dog. Oh on our dog. Ah, you know, it was lucky enough for one like. There was also news of a forthcoming fight, hosted by the farmers boys. It's a hundred percent. It's a new place that I'm going to use, so it'll be there along with. You're going to host it, like? The house right beside him, are But are you going to host it? Is, it, 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 is it your match to host, like? Is oh, it? It's, it's me, it's me hosting it, aren't right. Two days before the fight, Barraskill rang with the news we'd been waiting for. Steve had been invited. Security would be very tight. Even on the morning of the fight, Steve didn't know where he was going or who would be there. Steve would be picked up in a transit van from the paddock bar that evening. From there, he would be taken to a secret location, a ramshackle barn on land outside Tandragee, owned by Tom Bell. The farmer's boys call it the party house. It was an ideal venue for a dog fight. It's also where the gang have been breeding prime stock. We were convinced Steve would be frisked so decided not to take secret cameras to film this dogfight. Who was in there? Oh, there was people from Liverpool, people from Middlesbrough. The Scousers seem to be putting big bits on. The Scousers are real big into it, like, just for the money side of it. Well, they've been putting hundreds on, do they? Yeah, 2,500. Two, yeah, they put 2,500 on yeah. the match? Between them, yeah. No, that was just one person. It it it, it, it was medieval. The no. blood started probably was in the first. Probably was in the first two minutes. And what kind of injuries were these dogs been sustaining? Deep, deep puncture wounds from from the dog's teeth, and it, some of the puncture wounds were hitting like vital arteries, like veins, and you know, so they were real pumping. Pumping blood. Yeah, pumping blood and. When the dogs were hitting the perspex side of the wall, mm -hmm. then they were leaving big smears down the wall and big smears on the on, on the carpet. Ellie's grandmother, Jackie Simpson, was also injured during the attack by a pit bull called Reuben. Her son, Kyle Simpson, Ruben's owner, was jailed for eight weeks in May after admitting owning the illegal pit bull terrier. He served four weeks. Simpson said he bought the dog from a man in a pub and now feels morally responsible for Ellie's death. The court was told Ruben had immeasurable bite, strength and shake and was one of the most powerful pit bulls a police expert had ever seen. In the aftermath of Ellie's death, with moral panic about pit bulls in full flow, police mounted raids. But what was the impact on the Merseyside men who had attended the farmer's boys' dog fight? One of them was a man called Mick. As the father of one of his associates explained, Mick simply shipped his pit bulls to Spain. Well, Mick's been getting them away bit by bit, you know. Yeah. Mick's over in Spain now, wasn't he? Mick, yeah. He was over there a week ago. Mick's got loads of room over there, you know. Yeah. Aren't they? Is he Malaga or something like that, isn't it? It's some little place. He's building a thing there, isn't he? Yeah. Building something yeah. there. And it's not like the tourist attraction. It's we would just say it's by Malaga. Like it's yeah. nice and quiet. Yeah. He'll never have a problem there, you know. Yeah. Mick's been back and forth now. He's all the time until he got his own play, you know. Yeah. Going over there with vans, <laughs> many buses, everything full of dogs. For most of us, Ali's death came out of the blue. It seemed like a freak accident. 
but in the months before Ellie died, the writing was already on the wall in Merseyside. Pit bulls had been regularly making their horrific mark here. Eight-year-old Nikita Douglas was attacked by a pit bull in a park near her home seven months before Ellie Lawrenson died. The bite just missed a main artery. The wound was so bad, Nikita had to undergo extensive plastic surgery. She was lying on his stomach and his dad asked me did I want to see Nikita's leg. Thinking it was just going to be a bite, I said yeah. As soon as he pulls the surgical cloth from Nikita's leg, I had to reach over Nikita's bed and get a bowl because I was literally sick. And I cried and cried and cried and said, there's no way a dog's done that to Nikita's leg. It was just like a shark had got her leg. I couldn't talk to her because all I was doing was crying. I couldn't answer her questions. All she kept saying to me, Nan, why did the dog pick me? Why? How can you explain to an eight-year-old child? when I don't know the answer of it. It was Christian Duncan who operated on Nikita. For him, the 1991 Dangerous Dogs Act has made no difference. For surgeons, it's been business as usual for the last 15 years. There is evidence in the medical literature that the rate of dog bites, and in fact the type of dogs that engage in dog bites or cause dog bites, hasn't actually changed pre-1991 by comparison with post-1991 when the Dangerous Dogs Act came in. So I think it's reasonable to say that not enough was done 15 years ago, uh, let alone uh, what we're doing now. How many pit bulls do you think still live in your area? I'd say a good few. 10 or 20? Maybe more. In, in your in, estate? In the, on our estate, yeah, maybe more. American pit bulls? American pit bulls. And have you informed the police, have you informed the authorities that yes. there are maybe 20 pit bulls yes. living on your estate? And what do they say? Well, they, must, they mustn't be proper pit bulls if they've still got them. Has the police ever followed up any of your calls? No. Has anybody ever come out to identify the no. breed? No. After Nikita's attack, the authorities should have lifted all the pit bulls then, not wait for a child to be killed. If they would have done that, I really believe that Ellie Lawrenson would still be alive today. Over in Northern Ireland, the farmer's boys also knew the climate had changed. Steve rang Tom Bell to see how he was reacting to Ellie's death. The phone hasn't stopped today, have it? Ah, there's some, uh, there's some shit out in the fan, mate, isn't there? It's fucking deadly, isn't it? Aye. What about the guys in Liverpool, mate? Is it? Uh, it... I haven't. Uh, no one's been answering their phone. Stevie's been ringing them, but no one's answered their phone. It was on the news that they've seized eight or nine dogs in Liverpool. Holy fuck! I ain't gonna thin out a few. Get rid of some dogs, maybe the night. Aye. You know, just keep, keep a few sh you know, s a s a small ones, just. Aye. I, I could do a place of any anywhere. Would keep one dog for me. Is he all right with people? Like, is he? Oh, he's doing all the paper, eh? Huh? Just uh, being the safe side, keeping away from children. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. Keeping all away from children. She was not a child there above the fucking next to us. But Bell would soon have his own problems. His party house was raided a few days later. A lifetime of breeding the ultimate fighting dog looked to have disappeared overnight. 28 pit bulls were seized and taken away in a convoy of council and USPCA vans to be destroyed. For 30 years, the USPCA have asked for the public to give us information on organized dog fighting. Where are these dogs kept? We never got it. But one thing happened that was to change that forever. The death of Ellie Lawrenson started our phones ringing and they've never stopped ringing since. Stephen Barraskill had a cynical take on the party house raid and Ellie's death. They can basically do what the fucking like. I mean, this is supposed to be a free, democratic, free like, you know what I mean? We're fucking overfighting in our act for democracy, like we haven't got it at home. You would never think they just waited for that big year or something, you know what I mean, or something like that, to uh, capitalize, like it's disgusting that they're capitalizing on this big year being killed. This is basically a fucking English inner city problem. <laughs> A problem his gang had contributed to by selling dogs to just those cities. 
But despite the raids, it was clear the farmer's boys had no intention of giving up. Because things will come with it, you know, but they're just uh, owning it. But the end of the day, it's not a fucking hanging offence. All I can do is while the storm. But in the meantime, just we'll keep an eye for marches and home and different things coming up and fucking do that. With fighting in the UK on hold, some farmers' boys were pining for action. No problem for the international dogfighter, though. You just hop on a plane to another country. This time, it was Finland. And Bobby Gonzalez was the host. He'd organized a night of dogfighting, to which the farmers' boys were invited. The first farmer boy down the steps was Gary Adamson from Teesside. We'd met him before at the Tandragee dog fight. Farmer's boy Chris Hamill was also game. He'd travelled from Northern Ireland. Next day, Gonzalez conducted a tour of his yard located in the woods behind his home. Many of the dogs they would see here would fight later that night. And at least one would die. All of the fights took place here in Gonzalez's barn in a specially constructed pit. The actual ring was brand new when we went into it. It had just been built the day before. It was fresh, it was all clean wood. There wasn't a mark on it. Probably just by about fight three, the whole ring was just blood stained. <laughs> Steve tried to film the fights with a conventional camera, but Bobby Gonzalez had other ideas. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, Bobby. No? No. Not just on the dogs? You can't do it like that. Too, too, too uh, risky. Uh. Okay, here we go. The little guy, he's a house dog. So. <laughs> Fight one was a roll between two ten month old pups. Come on, boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's bred pure through the blood that they know how to fight straight away. And the first fight that we've seen, which was the young pups, it was a shock to know that young dogs will be able to do that. As the evening progressed, the dogs got older, bigger, and the clashes more violent. The dogs clash like a steam train hitting the wall. You can hear it, you can hear the bone crunching. <laughs> the heavier the dog, the more the crash. Really significant noise of bone on bone. The sounds are quite graphic, you can hear teeth on teeth as the dogs are chewing at each other's mouths and gums and lips. And if the dogs go under the legs, you can hear the teeth crunching bones and rubbing off bones into the skin, ripping sounds. You know that once you hear the sound, within seconds you'll see the blood. After a fight, some pit bulls received crude first aid. But for the more seriously injured, the dog fighters used medical kits. The medical kits that these guys were using were pretty similar to what a paramedic would use, certainly similar to trauma packs that would be used in combat situations. They range from all the drugs that were available to the IV sets and shock relief. Then came the final fight of the evening. It was between two pit bulls, which were actually smaller than the dog which killed Ellie Lawrenson. It was a very heavy dog fight, both dogs weighing in at 51, 52 pounds. Hammy from the farmers, boys agreed to referee the final fight. Probably the most horrific fight. That fight lasted for 45 minutes. And there wasn't a let up for the 45 minutes. As the fight wore on, the ring became increasingly covered in blood. And slowly, 
but surely one of the dogs started to weaken. But it wasn't its opponent which moved in for the kill. Bobby Gonzalez lifted the dog and took it to a side building, put a crocodile clip onto its tail and a crocodile clip onto its ear and threw a bucket of water over the dog and then rigged it to the main electricity system to kill it. The first that we knew that there was something up was that all the lights in the barn went off. It hadn't worked because it had fused. The dog was near dead but not quite complete, so he took it to the house to finish the job. Back inside his house, Gonzalez didn't seem to be too upset at electrocuting the dog, which had just given its all for him. Its death had freed up what he callously called chain space. Good night. Cheers, mate. Good night. Cheers, mate. That was... Uh... Finally got one chain space. It's not bad sometimes to just thin them out like, is it? Yeah, the summer of... Get rid of most of them. I'll be happy if I just have four or five. Hi. Good match dog. Three weeks ago, we caught up with Gonzalez outside a restaurant near his home. For our safety, we had warned Finnish police we were going to confront him. Mr Gonzalez, my name is Mandy McCauley. I'm a reporter with the BBC. I want to ask you about illegal dog fighting. You've been holding illegal dog fights at your home in Finland. Mr Gonzalez, maybe this will jog your memory. This is a picture of you, Mr Gonzalez on your knees in a blood-stained ring, goading two ten-month-old pups on no. to go in for the kill. Are you proud of that, Mr. Gonzalez? Why do you do it, Mr. Gonzalez? Do you get it? Then the Finnish police arrested him for animal cruelty. Do you enjoy watching animals suffer? What about the animal that you hooked up to the electricity, Mr. Gonzalez? You poured a bucket of water over it and you watched while it died. Are you proud of that, Mr. Gonzalez? With Merseyside dogfighters like Mick exporting pit bulls to elude capture, you might conclude that in the current climate, it's not the best time to import a fighting dog into the UK. But you'd be wrong. It's shockingly easy, despite a ban. The import of dogs bred for fighting, such as the American pit bull terriers, will be banned. We visited the Dunkells to arrange for Nipper, our pit bull, to travel to the UK via Dublin. Other pit bulls the Dunkells had sold and exported to dog fighters had been doing well in the months since we had last met them. Recently we had some very good results from Sweden and one of our dogs has been winning now. He is the two-time winner, so good. that's really good. Nipper! Nipper! Yeah. <laughs> Nipper would be travelling on a Dunkell doctored EU pet passport, claiming he was a boxer Labrador mix. If somebody questions this, then you have to be confident and say, you know, shut yeah. the fuck up, it is a box or a laboratory. Yeah, yeah. Nipper was loaded into the aircraft without a hitch. He travelled first from Finland to Frankfurt. A change of planes and then on to Dublin. The Irish Republic is a back door into the UK for fighting dogs. Pit bulls are legal here. And according to our dog fighting contacts, it would be easy to get Nipper into the country. That's exactly what happened. We weren't questioned once about Nipper's true breed or background, even though he had fighting scars on his backside and front legs. Once we'd overcome some bureaucratic hurdles, it was just a simple matter of popping Nipper into a van and driving him north into Northern Ireland and the UK. It's been a long journey, but we're about to cross the border from the Irish Republic into the UK. Bar a few bureaucratic hiccups, it's gone very smoothly. In fact, I can't believe just how easy it is to import a top fighting dog into the UK. Mr Dunkell, my name is Mandy McCauley. I'm a reporter with the BBC. I want to ask you why you've been exporting fighting pit bulls across Europe on false papers. We have been secretly filming you, Mr. Dunkell. You train pit bulls, Mr. Dunkell, and you sell them to the highest bidder. Do you remember Nipper? You sold Nipper to the BBC on false papers. 
Mr. Dunkell, you told us he was a pit bull. You put down in the papers that he was a Labrador. Mrs. Dunkell, I want to speak to you. It's Mandy McCauley from the BBC. Mrs. Dunkell, why have you been why have you been exporting fighting pit bulls across Europe? Mrs. Dunkell, we have you filmed walking around your dog fighting factory. That's what it is, isn't it, Mrs. Dunkell? It's a dog fighting factory. Why would you speak to me? Do you remember telling us that you, you saw me last week, Mrs. Dunkell? We secretly filmed you. We have been secretly filming you for a year. The police then drove Yona Dunkell away. She and her husband, like Bobby Gonzalez, faced a maximum of two years in prison for animal cruelty. As for the farmer's boys, they too kept quiet when we approached them. The USPCA and the Finnish authorities will be following up on our findings. We took Nipper over the Irish Sea just to be sure there wasn't anything to stop us. There wasn't. Then a drive to Liverpool to take the pit bull for a walk. Afterwards, we took him safely back to the Irish Republic. But while Nipper was on Merseyside, he was just one of hundreds of the supposedly outlawed breed walking the streets where Ellie Lawrenson died. So much for the ban. The tragic, logical conclusion to all of this is that although Ellie Lawrenson was the first child to be killed in Britain by a pit bull terrier, she definitely won't be the last. Panorama returns on Monday at 8.30 on BBC One. The BBC has been given unique access to the documents discovered in Cavlin's house. They read like a who's who of the dog fighting fraternity. Some of the top fighting gangs in the country are listed here. They have names like Boneyard Kennels, Prize Fighter, and Cavlin's own outfit, the Bulldog Sanctuary Kennels. There were also blow-by-blow -blow accounts of major dog fights in Ireland, the UK and Europe in the last 10 years. Some of the dog fighters are even pictured posing with their pit bulls, and children are included in some of the snaps. The material at Jared Cavillan's house showed us that dog fighting was more organised, more lucrative and, and bigger than we had ever, ever thought possible. This was an absolute Aladdin's cave of material for anyone who now wanted to go and investigate dogfighting. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. Clearly, Cavlin had international connections. As we sifted through the box of evidence seized from the football star's home, two names stood out. A Finn called Robert Gonzalez, the man named on Cannonball's pet passport, and Paul Dunkell, the boss of a pit bull breeding business based outside Helsinki. Posing as a couple, Steve, the undercover operative and I, travelled to Finland to investigate the possibility of buying a fighting pit bull from Paul Dunkel. We find his house hidden away at the end of a long lane, surrounded by forest. Hi, Paul. Hello. How are you? Dunkel led us on a kennel tour, assuring us his dogs had impeccable fighting credentials. We used secret cameras on this trip, but Dunkel did allow us to use a camcorder. 
Pit bulls are legal in Finland. Dog fighting is not. Usually we have about 40 dogs here. Yep. And right now I guess the exact count is something like 35 or something like that, more or less. If you are searching for a fighting dog, then I suggest that we do some deal like this, that we test him here before you even talk more. This could be a little bit uh, what you are searching for, a uh, wild, crazy, active, yes. sporting dog. And he has been in some action. And this is almost a guarantee that it's... Health. Stephen Barraskill turned up. Did you make any money yesterday? No, I hadn't. No, I had a lot of money on it. Yeah. Somebody always a lot of... I'm not really a gambler. I hate losing. <laughs> Sends the atmosphere a bit bad at the end, don't uh, yeah. It's just pure sport for me, you know. Aye. Uh, and the, with the injured battle with the... Or a bit. Sorry, yeah. A couple of guys from L Liverpool there. And uh, I think they had about 1,000 euros each of them. On, you know, on our dog. Oh, on our dear dog. Aye. Ah, you know, it was lucky enough to one like. <laughs> There was also news of a forthcoming fight, hosted by the farmers' boys. It's a hundred percent. It's a new place that I'm going to use. So it'll be there longer. So you're going to host it, like the house right beside it, or? But are you going to host it? Is it's it? Gonna, is, is it your match to host, like? Is oh, it? it's it's me. It's me hosting it. Right? Right. Two days before the fight, Barraskill rang with the news we'd been waiting for. Steve had been invited. Security would be very tight. Even on the morning of the fight, Steve didn't know where he was going or who would be there. Steve would be picked up in a transit van from the paddock bar that evening. From there, he would be taken to a secret location, a ramshackle barn on land outside Tandragee owned by Tom Bell. The farmer's boys call it the party house. It was an ideal venue for a dog fight. It's also where the gang have been breeding prime stock. We were convinced Steve would be frisked, so decided not to take secret cameras to film this dog fight. Who was in there? Oh, there was people from Liverpool, people from Middlesbrough. The Scousers seem to be putting big bits on. The Scousers are real big into it, like, just for the money side of it. Well, they've been putting hundreds on, do they? Yeah, two, two, yeah, 2,500. They put 2,500 on the yeah. match? Between them, yeah? No, that was just one person. It, 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 it was medieval. The no. blood started probably within the first... Probably within the first two minutes. And what kind of injuries were these dogs been sustaining? Deep, deep puncture wounds from, from the dog's teeth. And it, some of the puncture wounds were hitting like vital arteries, like veins, and you know, so they were real pumping. Pumping blood? Yeah, pumping blood. And the, when the dogs were hitting the uh, prospect side of the wall, mm -hmm. then they were leaving these big smears down the wall, big smears on the, on, on the carpet. Hang on, fans. All I can do is while the storm. But in the meantime, just we'll keep an eye for marches and home and different things coming up and fucking do that. With fighting in the UK on hold, some farmers' boys were pining for action. No problem for the international dogfighter, though. You just hop on a plane to another country. This time, it was Finland and Bobby Gonzalez was the host. He'd organized a night of dog fighting to which the farmer's boys were invited. The first farmer boy down the steps was Gary Adamson from Teesside. We'd met him before at the Tandragee dog fight. Farmer's boy Chris Hamill was also game. He'd traveled from Northern Ireland. Next day, Gonzalez conducted a tour of his yard, located in the woods behind his home. Many of the dogs they would see here would fight later that night. And at least one would die. 
All of the fights took place here in Gonzalez's barn in a specially constructed pit. The actual ring was brand new when we went into it. It had just been built the day before. It was fresh, it was all clean wood. There wasn't a mark on it. Probably by about fight three, the whole ring was just bloodstained. <laughs> Steve tried to film the fights with a conventional camera, but Bobby Gonzalez had other ideas. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, Bobby. No. No? No. Not just on the dogs? You can't do it like that. Too, too, too uh, risky. Uh. Okay, here we go. The little guy, he's a house dog. So. <laughs> Fight one was a roll between two ten-month-old pups. Oh boy. <laughs> it's bred pure through the blood that they know how to fight straight away, and the. Uh, first fight that we've seen which was the young pups it was a shock to know that young dogs will be able to do that as the evening progressed the dogs got older bigger and the clashes more violent Dogs clash like a steam train hitting the wall. You can hear it. It never came off. We didn't kidnap Cannonball. We never intended to. Cavlin Julie appeared in court on the 23rd of April. He pleaded guilty to possession of a pit bull type, but the court heard that Cavlin was an innocent who had collected Cannonball as a favor for a friend. The footballer walked free with a fine, a five-year ban on keeping terrier-type dogs, and ordered to pay costs. On appeal, the courts reduced the costs and lifted the ban on owning dogs. Mr. Cavlin, Mandy McCauley from the BBC. I want to ask you some questions. Mr. Cavlin, why was the court told that you knew nothing about pit bulls? Mr. Cavlin, that's a lie. It's a lie, isn't it? You're an international dog fighter. You've been travelling to matches across Europe, watching animals rip each other apart. How do you think your fans will feel when they realise what you've been doing, that you've been involved in animal cruelty? How do you think the authorities will feel whenever they realise you've got fighting dogs stashed across the country? Cavlin may lead a double life, but let's get back to the men whose whole life it is to fight dogs, the farmer's boys. In the weeks before Christmas, Steve met them again at the paddock. The gang had just won a dog fight. This is Tom Bell. He is Stephen Barriskill's right-hand man and the breeding backbone of the farmer's boys. You going all right yesterday, huh? I haven't won in 26 months. Yeah, Long enough, aren't they? Oh, fuck, that's a quick one. That was quick enough. 26 minutes. Then the godfather himself, Stephen Barriskill, turned up. Did you make any money yesterday? No, I hadn't. No, I hadn't. I had a lot of money on it. Somebody always a lot of... I'm not really a gambler. I hate losing. <laughs> Sends the atmosphere a bit bad at the end, right? Uh, yeah. Of course, it's just pure sport for me, you know. Aye. Uh, with the injured bat or with a... Ball is fucking... Alright, yeah. Fucking... It's a couple of eyes from L Liverpool there. And, uh, I think they had about 1,000 euros each of them. On, you know, on our dog. Oh, on our dear dog. Aye. You know, it's lucky enough for one leg. There was also news of a forthcoming fight. Hosted by the farmers' boys. It's a hundred percent. It's a new place that I'm going to use. So I'm going to do it on it. Children host it like the house. Father of the farmers' boys, Stephen Barriskill. He caught his attention by talking about our recent trip to Duncal Kennels. I just moved over from England there and I was looking at it. Don't get any good I just ordered one there now, so should be ready to go. What the hell is your friend? 
Legend has it that Barisgill imported the first pit bull into Northern Ireland in the 1980s when the dogs were still legal. The Dangerous Dogs Act was meant to stamp out pit bulls as a breed. But dog fighting still thrives, attracting some very dangerous people, as the USPCA has discovered. Sledgehammer attacks on our properties, arson attacks on our properties, and on numerous occasions, these people just steal the dogs straight back off us again. It's a very, very, very difficult world to bring to an end. A world our undercover operative was being drawn into. Steve's exchange at Castle Bellingham was enough to get him invited to another show on the Farmer's Boys' home turf in Northern Ireland. Pit bulls are banned here, but the gang openly paraded fighting dogs among legitimate breeds. And Stephen Barriscoe had a surprise in store. Why not? Keep his right, right? Well, they'll be arranged here then, me, you know. We're showing our own dogs. What was Steve supposed to do? It had to be a test. But would he pass? Right, you see in this class here, uh, staff dogs and bitches. And then you have a small type staff. Yeah. Well, that's the show type staff. Yeah. That's the Irish staff. Yeah. American staff, dog and American staff, bitches. That's just slang for pit bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, if you're going to judge in here, I'll not be seen talking to you. But I'd rather if you stayed away from me, you know what I mean? Right. Because, uh, <laughs> in case you put any of my dogs up. <laughs> <laughs> Barisco could relax. Whatever happened, the farmer's boys would take away the top prizes that day. I'm working, stop, dog! So this, is, it, is, it, is this small stuff as well? No, this is American pit bull dogs. First up was a farmer's boy with his fighting dog, Bucky. Yeah. How long's that him? Three years. Good dog? Game boy? Oh, on. Yeah. Good chunk up over in Northern Ireland, the farmers' boys also knew the climate had changed. Steve rang Tom Bell to see how he was reacting to Ellie's death. The phone hasn't stopped today, ever. Ah, oh, there's some, uh, there's some shit in the fan, mate, isn't there? Fucking deadly, isn't there? Aye. Right. What about the guys in Liverpool, mate? Is it? Uh, it... I haven't. No one has been answering their phone. Stevie's been ringing them, but no one has answered their phone. It was on the news that they've seized eight or nine dogs in Liverpool. Holy fuck! I want to thin out a few. Get rid of some dogs, maybe the night. Aye. You know, just keep a few sh a s a small ones just. Aye. I, I could do a place if you knew anywhere would keep one dog for me. Is he all right with people, like is he? Oh, he's doing all the paper, huh? Just uh, being the safe side, keeping away from children. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. Keeping all away from children. Because no child there above the fucking next to us. But Bell would soon have his own problems. His party house was raided a few days later. A lifetime of breeding the ultimate fighting dog looked to have disappeared overnight. 28 pit bulls were seized and taken away in a convoy of council and USPCA vans to be destroyed. For 30 years, the USPCA have asked for the public to give us information on organized dog fighting. Where are these dogs kept? We never got it. But one thing happened that was to change that forever. The death of Ellie Lawrenson started our phones ringing and they've never stopped ringing since. Stephen Barrasco had a cynical take on the party house raid and Ellie's death. They can basically do it the fucking lake. I mean, this is supposed to be a free democratic free lake, you know what I mean? We're fucking overfighting in Iraq for democracy, like I haven't got it at home. You would near think they just waited for that big year or something, you know what I mean, or something like that, to, to capitalize, like it's disgusting that they're capitalizing on this big year being killed. This is basically a fucking English inner city problem. 
a problem his gang had contributed to by selling dogs to just those cities. But despite the raids, it was clear the farmer's boys had no intention of giving up. Because things will come with it, you know, but they're just before it. But at the end of the day, it's not a fucking hanging offence. All I can do is weather the storm. But in the meantime, just will keep an eye for marches and Holland and different things coming up and fucking do that. With fighting in the UK on hold, some farmers' boys were pining for action. 91 Dangerous Dogs Act has made no difference. For surgeons, it's been business as usual for the last 15 years. There is evidence in the medical literature that the rate of dog bites, and in fact the type of dogs that engage in dog bites or cause dog bites, hasn't actually changed pre-1991 by comparison with post-1991 when the Dangerous Dogs Act came in. So I think it's reasonable to say that not enough was done 15 years ago, uh, let alone uh, what we're doing now. How many pit bulls do you think still live in your area? I'd say a good few. 10 or 20? Maybe more. In, in your in, estate? In, the, in our estate, yeah, maybe more. American pit bulls? American pit bulls. And have you informed the police, have you informed the authorities that yes. there are maybe 20 pit bulls yes. living on your estate? And what do they say? Well, they, must, they mustn't be proper pit bulls if they've still got them. Has the police ever followed up any of your calls? No. Has anybody ever come out to identify the no. breed? No. After Nikita's attack, the authorities should have lifted all the pit bulls then, not wait for a child to be killed. If they would have done that, I really believe that Ellie Lawrence would still be alive today. Over in Northern Ireland, the farmers' boys also knew the climate had changed. Steve rang Tom Bell to see how he was reacting to Ellie's death. The phone hasn't stopped today, ever. Ah, oh, there's some, uh, there's some shit in the fan, mate, isn't there? Fucking deadly, isn't it? Aye. What about the guys in Liverpool, mate? Is it? Uh, it... I haven't. No one has been answering their phone. Stevie's been ringing them, but no one has answered their phone. It was on the news that they've seized eight or nine dogs in Liverpool. Holy fuck! I ain't gonna thin out a few. Get rid of some dogs, maybe the night. Aye. You know, keep, keep a few sh you know, s s small ones just. Aye. I, I could do a place if you knew anywhere would keep one dog for me. Is he all right with people, like is he? Oh, he's doing all the paper, eh? Just uh, being the safe side, keeping away from children. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. Keeping all away from children. She was not a child dead above the fucking next to us. But Bell would soon have his own problems. His party house was raided a few days later. A lifetime of breeding the ultimate fighting dog looked to have disappeared overnight. 28 pit bulls were seized and taken away in a convoy of council and USPCA vans to be destroyed. For 30 years, the USPCA have asked for the public to give us information on organized dog fighting. Where are these dogs kept? We never got it. But one thing happened that was to change that forever. All I can do is weather the storm. But in the meantime, just we'll keep an eye for marches and Holland and different things coming up and fucking with fighting in the UK on hold, some farmers boys were pining for action. No problem for the international dog fighter though, you just hop on a plane to another country. This time it was Finland and Bobby Gonzalez was the host. He'd organized a night of dog fighting to which the farmer's boys were invited. The first farmer boy down the steps was Gary Adamson from Teesside. We'd met him before at the Tandragi dog fight. Farmer's boy Chris Hamill was also game. He'd traveled from Northern Ireland. Next day, Gonzalez conducted a tour of his yard, located in the woods behind his home. 
many of the dogs they would see here would fight later that night. And at least one would die. All of the fights took place here in Gonzalez's barn in a specially constructed pit. The actual ring was brand new when we went into it. It had just been built the day before. It was fresh, it was all clean wood. There wasn't a mark on it. Probably by about fight three, the whole ring was just bloodstained. <laughs> Steve tried to film the fights with a conventional camera, but Bobby Gonzalez had other ideas. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, Bobby. No. No? No. Not just on the dogs? You can't do it like that. Too, too, too uh, risky. Uh. Okay, here we go. The little guy, he's a, he's a house dog. So. <laughs> Fight one was a roll between two ten month old pups. Come on, boy. <laughs> it's bred pure through the blood that they know how to fight straight away. And the first fight that we've seen, which was the young pups. It was a shock to know that young dogs would be able to do that. As the evening progressed, the dogs got older, bigger, and the clashes more violent. The dogs clash like a steam train hitting the wall. You can hear it, you can hear the bone cut. How long's that him? Three years. Good dog. All right, game boy. Come on, good dog, that's it. Yeah, three years. Three years, that's it. Good chunks here, don't we? All right, yeah, well, <laughs> all healed up, yeah. Yeah, there's another chunk out of the fucking whole day here. Ah, oh, shit. Good chunks here, don't we? You're fucking like some big dogs, boy, sir. All right. Get in underneath them and fucking lap them, but. Yeah. Uh, so they don't have any. Great dog, boys, they fucking 60 turns, he was racking. <laughs> Next up was another farmer's boy. Or should that be a farmer's girl? What's his line? Um, he's farmer's boy, he's with a touch of China man. Yeah. How long have you had him? Have you had him from Pop Lager, yeah? He's Stevie's dog. Oh, yeah. You'll be getting a prize then. But one of our biggest prizes of the day was meeting this man, farmer's boy Chris Hamill. He had actually watched Cannonball fight in Finland with the footballer Jared Cavlin. You've seen Cannonball fight like? Yeah. Fucking happy mate there, but he was a small dog like, and he was fucking eating it yesterday, but the big dog just came back on him just to finish him then. Steve got his reward for handing out most of the prizes to the farmer's boys. Bariskel invited him to join them for a drink after the show. If the judging was a test, Steve had not only passed, but he'd started to earn his place in the farmer's boy's fold. There's a pub in Tondra Gee we're all going for a drink in the night. Right, okay. Called the Paddock. You sure want to come down? That's great, mate. Well, Bennett's made a flat. Right. There's a whole lot of dog men there. The Paddock is the farmer's boy's pub of choice. Located in Tondra Gee's High Street, Steve met the farmer's boys there on many subsequent occasions. Invariably, to hear Barisco hold court. What it came down to was that the farmers' boys' kennel, as the call ourselves, was the biggest supplier within Europe for fighting American pit bull terriers. Their main buyers at the minute is the Asian community from Birmingham. They could buy up to 20 dogs a month. And they're buying them in pup form and bringing them up themselves, or they're buying the dogs at two, two and a half year old, ready for fighting. We are into going over and taking the pup in Germans and hauling them one thing or another. You know what I mean? Or not, you know what I mean? That's what Brenda. We were the first people ever to pup and take dogs out in the continent. You know what I mean? That's the direction we want to go in. You know, for pupping like a warrior force. The farmers boys have built their name on keeping outsiders out. But that's just what they've done. Him increasingly covered in blood. And slowly but surely, one of the dogs started to weaken. But it wasn't its opponent 
which moved in for the kill. Bobby Gonzalez lifted the dog and took it to a side building, put a crocodile clip onto its tail and a crocodile clip onto its ear and threw a bucket of water over the dog and then rigged it to the main electricity system to kill it. The first that we knew that there was something up was that all the lights in the barn went off. It hadn't worked because it had fused. The dog was near dead but not quite complete, so he took it to the house to finish the job. Back inside his house, Gonzalez didn't seem to be too upset at electrocuting the dog, which had just given its all for him. Its death had freed up what he callously called chain space. What a guy. Cheers, mate. Good night. Cheers, mate. That was... Uh... Finally got... One chain space. It's not bad sometimes to just thin them out like is it? Yeah, the summer of get rid of most of them. I'll be happy if I just have four or five. Hi. Good match dog. Three weeks ago, we caught up with Gonzalez outside a restaurant near his home. For our safety, we had warned Finnish police we were going to confront him. Mr. Gonzalez, my name is Mandy McCauley. I'm a reporter with the BBC. I want to ask you about illegal dog fighting. You've been holding illegal dog fights at your home in Finland. Mr. Gonzalez, maybe this will jog your memory. This is a picture of you, Mr. Gonzalez, on your knees in a blood-stained ring, goading two 10-month-old pups on to go in for the kill. Are you proud of that, Mr. Gonzalez? Why do you do it, Mr. Gonzalez? Do you get it? Then the Finnish police arrested him for animal cruelty. Do you enjoy watching animals suffer? What about the animal that you hooked up to the electricity, Mr. Gonzalez? You poured a bucket of water over it and you watched while it died. Are you proud of that, Mr. Gonzalez? With Merseyside dogfighters like Mick exporting pit bulls to elude capture, you might conclude that in the current climate, it's not the best time to import a fighting dog into the UK. But you'd be wrong. It's shockingly easy, despite a ban. The import of dogs bred for fighting, such as the American Pit Bull Terriers, will be banned. We visited the Dunkells to arrange for Nipper, our Pit Bull, to travel to the UK via Dublin. Other Pit Bulls the Dunkells had sold and exported to dog fighters had been doing well in the months since we had... Steve had spotted the godfather of the farmer's boys, Stephen Barskill. He caught his attention by talking about our recent trip to Dunkel Kennels. I just moved over from England there and I was looking at looking to get a good dog. I just ordered one there now, so should be ready to go. What the hell is the brand? Finland. Finland, all right. Actually, good stuff right there, sure is. I haven't been there and I have a couple of minutes to been there. Legend has it that Barriskill imported the first pit bull into Northern Ireland in the 1980s, when the dogs were still legal. The Dangerous Dogs Act was meant to stamp out pit bulls as a breed. But dog fighting still thrives, attracting some very dangerous people, as the USPCA has discovered. Sledgehammer attacks on our properties, arson attacks on our properties, and on numerous occasions, these people just steal the dogs straight back off us again. It's a very, very, very difficult world to bring to an end. A world our undercover operative was being drawn into. Steve's exchange at Castle Bellingham was enough to get him invited to another show on the Farmer's Boys home turf in Northern Ireland. Pit bulls are banned here, but the gang openly paraded fighting dogs among legitimate breeds. And Stephen Barriskill had a surprise in store. Listen, do you, do you make beer with it here? Huh? Could you judge the dogs? Pitbulls. Yes, you might not. They're going to keep us right, mate. Well, they'll be arranged here at NMA, you know. We're showing our own dogs. What was Steve supposed to do? It had to be a test. But would he pass? Right, you see in this class here? Uh, staff dogs and bitches. And then you have a small type staff. Yeah. Well, that's a show type staff. Yeah. That's... The Irish staff, yeah, American staff, dog and American staff, bitches. That's just slang for pit bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, if you're going to be judging here, I'll not be seen talking to you. But, but, but that, or if you stay away from me, you know what I mean? Right. Because 
Uh, <laughs> in case you put any of my dogs up. <laughs> <laughs> Barrisco could relax. Whatever happened, the farmer's boys would take away the top prizes that day. I'm working stuff, dogs! So this, is, it, is, it, is this small stuff as well? No, this is American pit bull dogs. First up was a farmer's boy with his fighting dog, Bucky. Yeah. How long's that in? Three years. Good dog. Game boy. Come on, stream up there. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, if you're going to judge in here, I'll not be seen talking to you. But I'd rather if you stay away from me, you know what I mean? Right. Because, uh, <laughs> in case you put any of my dogs up. <laughs> <laughs> Barrisco could relax. Whatever happened, the farmer's boys would take away the top prizes that day. I'm working stuff, dogs! So this, is, it, is, it, is this small stuff as well? No, this is American pit bull dogs. First up was a farmer's boy with his fighting dog, Bucky. Yeah. How long's that in? Three years. Good dog. Right. Game boy. Come on. Yeah. 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 Next up was another farmer's boy. Or should that be a farmer's girl? What's his line? Um, he's farmer's boy, he's with a touch of China man. Yeah. How long have you had him? Have hmm? you had him from Pop Lag? Like, he's Stevie's dog. Oh, yeah. You'll be getting a prize then. But one of our biggest prizes of the day was meeting this man, farmer's boy Chris Hamill. He had actually watched Cannonball fight in Finland with the footballer Jared Cavlin. You've seen Cannonball fight like? Yeah. Fucking happy mate there, but he was a small dog like, and he was fucking eating the TSA, but the big dog just took him back on him just to finish him there. Steve got his reward for handing out most of the prizes to the farmer's boys. Barriskill invited him to join them for a drink after the show. If the judging was a test, Steve had not only passed, but he'd started to earn his place in the farmer's boy's fold. There's a pub in Tondra Gee we're all going for a drink in the night. Right, called okay. the Paddock. You sure want to come down? That's great, mate. Well, Bennett's made a flat. Right. There's a whole lot of dog men there. The Paddock is the farmer's boy's pub of choice. Located in Tondra Gee's High Street, Steve met the farmer's boys there on many subsequent occasions. Invariably, to hear Barrisco hold court. What it came down to was that the farmers' boys kennel, as the call ourselves, was the biggest supplier within Europe for fighting American pit bull terriers. Their main buyers at the minute is the Asian community from Birmingham. They could buy up to 20 dogs a month. Needs to be asked on Merseyside. For Liverpool's young criminal class, pit bulls are a status symbol. The gangs even post videos on the internet boasting about their dogs. Anyone caught possessing a pit bull will usually have their dog destroyed. But if owners convince the courts their pet isn't a danger and will be neutered, microchipped, muzzled and leashed in public, only then will they be spared. Roxana Khan believed she'd be the pit bull's last child victim. She wasn't. This is BBC Radio Merseyside. A five-year-old girl has been mauled to death by a pit bull terrier at the family home on Merseyside has been named as Ellie Lawrenson. It was here on Merseyside in the early hours of New Year's Day that the pit bull ripped its way into the public consciousness again with the death of Ellie Lawrenson. 
Panorama has been given access to statements made by police and paramedics who were here at the scene on the night Ellie died. The content is horrific, but if you want to know how seriously pit bulls need to be taken, then you should listen. I walked into the house and there was blood in the hallway. I looked in the front room and the laminate flooring was covered in blood. I saw a dark coloured suite and a large chair by the window. I saw a girl's body. Her head was near the large chair. I covered the child's body with blankets. Christian Duncan is a plastic surgeon at the Alder Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool. He operates on those children that survive dog attacks. And over the last year, he's been kept extremely busy. In this hospital, we have averaged over the last year approximately one admission to uh, the accident and emergency every day. Around 70 of those suffered wounds so serious they underwent plastic surgery. And disturbingly, more and more of Christian Duncan's patients are turning out to be very young children. We get an increasing number of children between around about the age of one and the age of six. Around a quarter of these children will be victims of pit bulls. An American pit bull terrier or pit bull dog can inflict very serious damage on a child. The bite force that's generated is very significant and usually involves puncture wounds and that will be 